Okay, so let's say at this point you've downloaded your repos for all you CDM, original CDMA carrier users um, or GSM. You pop in your SIM card to begin with to unlock it. And uh, let's see, so we pop it in, we go into settings, then you want to scroll down to phone, and then here SIM applications should show up. Now it doesn't always show up immediately as we can see. Um, <clears throat> It's not there, but if you give it about 15 seconds or so, um, we can go back in and you'll see the same applications is there. Now, sometimes it's not always that easy. You will need to reboot the phone and uh, and then go ahead and look. And if it's still not there, you go out, wait a few seconds, then go back in. Um, if you can't get it to uh, show up after a few tries, uh, you can try airplane mode as well. Sometimes that'll kind of help it kick into a uh, searching mode and help it recognize that there's a SIM inside of it. Uh, but if you can't get that to work, there's a couple of other things that you want to take a look at. Um, the first thing is you want to pop out your SIM card and you want to take a look at the SIM card itself. Uh, some of you guys may have cut your own SIM cards out there. Um, you want to look at the SIM card and make sure that the contact points on the SIM card and the RSIM line up with each other. Um, as you can see, there's uh, six embossed areas right here on the RSIM itself, and there is uh, six areas on the SIM card. Uh, so if those don't line up, then it's not going to make a connection. Your phone won't actually register that there's a uh, SIM card in it in the first place. If your SIM card is uh, one that you had cut yourself, I do recommend, as I had mentioned before, most of these issues can all be resolved with a proper SIM card and make sure that you get the right one. If you have the right SIM card and it's still not registering, um, or e even if it's not the right SIM card and it's not registering, it could potentially be a problem with the RSIM itself. Um, even if if, uh, if your SIM card is not a 128K, it'll still at least register in the phone uh, and SIM applications will show up. So what you want to do is take a look at your RSIM. Uh, take a look and see if it's bent. If it's bent, it can uh, cause it to break connections. Um, also, it can cause it so it, it doesn't sit flat on the SIM card and it doesn't make the connection with that. So take a look at it, make sure it's flat, make sure it doesn't look damaged. Um, the next thing <clears throat> that you want to do, if uh, everything checks out, you everything lines up and checks out and you pop it back into your phone and you can't get it to show up. I've actually got a defective RSIM right here that I'm going to show you just as an example. Um, so we'll take this one out that we know obviously works and I'm going to put this one in right here which obviously looking at it you can't tell that it's defective by looking at it. It doesn't look broken but it came right out of the package defective. And I'll show you what this does when we pop this in with our SIM card. So let's go ahead and put this in. and. We will give it a few seconds, we'll wait. <clears throat> now generally anytime you put a SIM card in, whether it's an active one or it's not an active one, if it's a 128K or 64K or whatever, your phone's at least going to register that there's something in the phone. Um, if it's a uh, GSM phone right up here at the top, it'll say no SIM and then switch to no service once about 15 seconds after you put a SIM card in. If it's CDMA, obviously it always stays at no service like that and this always stays highlighted. But if you look inside of here, it's not registering that there's anything in there. All it says is my number T2I. It doesn't even show up with SIM pin or anything like that. The phone doesn't even recognize that anything is in the phone. The reason being is because when an RSIM fails, it actually fails. It's not like sometimes it'll kind of work or it only works every so often. If uh, anything in this microchip ends up, if any connections are broken within the microchip for whatever reason, then it just won't even register that there's anything in the phone at all. So if you're popping your SIM card in and out and turning it on and off, and no matter what you do, um, it doesn't register that anything's in there. One thing that you might try is uh, actually taking out your SIM card, popping out the RSIM itself, putting your SIM card in, and then seeing if your SIM card registers in the phone. Again, it's at least going to register like this. See, it pops up and says that there's a new voicemail. Obviously, there's not a new voicemail, but it just went through all these changes. So we know that it's making a connection in the phone. The SIM card's good, um, but if we put it in with the RSIM, it doesn't even recognize at all. So there we've just uh, troubleshooted it, and we know that uh, in this case with this SIM card, um, or excuse me, with this RSIM, that it's defective and it doesn't work. So if you're having the same issues and you just can't get it to register at all, then you need to get a new RSIM. And one advice that I always give to people when buying RSIMs is you always buy more than one. The reason being is if you pop it out of the package like this one and it doesn't work right from the get-go, then you don't have to wait to send it back and uh, have them send you a new one. 
Um, also, if you buy more than one, if both of them work right off the bat, and let's say a year down the road it ends up crapping out on you, you don't have to go all that time while you wait for them to send you a new one without a phone or having to use a backup phone. Um, so I just always recommend. I do have a lot of people um, ask me where I, you know who my supplier is and who I use. I did make the mistake at one point in time for a couple of days posting the link on my how-to video. Uh, about three days later, I went to go buy my own from my supplier, and they were backdated for about three weeks. So <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll make that mistake again, but if you really, really, really want to know who my supplier is, email me about it, or I can give you recommendations. Um, typically, I just go to to uh, to uh, eBay. Uh, that's a great place to find lots of great suppliers. Um, you can compare prices there, and also you can take a look at their feedback and see if other customers have been pleased with their purchases. They have pretty good buyer protection there as well. So check the feedback, make sure that it seems legitimate, make sure other people have purchased it and we're happy with the purchase. And if all of that checks out and it's a good price and you're happy with it, um, go ahead and buy it. Also make sure that you buy within your own country. Um, if you're buying from, if you're in the United States and you're buying from China, it may take up to four weeks uh, even sometimes six weeks to get your item, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, plus, if you need to return it, it takes longer to get it back to them, as well as it's, it's, sometimes it's almost more expensive to ship it back to them than it was to buy the 